This lesson is on how cells get energy and use energy. It's actually the first of two lessons about this. And um, please write your notes on page 21 in your notebook. Now, you may have heard of this word metabolism. The word metabolism has to do with all the chemical reactions that are occurring in a living thing. And right now, of course, we're talking about cells. So we're talking about metabolism inside of a cell. Understand that all living things have to get energy to survive and that these reactions that are taking place inside the cell help them to get energy. There's a lot of reactions going on in a cell, but the ones we're focusing on is about energy. You'll see here that there are um, two things mentioned. And um, the first is, this says catabolic. Catabolic pathways take food or some other uh, substance and break it down. Um, to get energy, and then these other pathways or these other things called anabolic. Anabolic has to do with building up new molecules, so energy is required to build those things up. Now, when we think about energy for cells, you always must consider this molecule called ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it's the energy that a cell has that a cell uses. It's the form that cells use. So we think about energy um, a lot of different ways, but a lot of times we think about the food you take in and you, you digest that food and that's going to give you energy. Well, what ends up happening is after it's digested, it becomes um, a molecule called glucose, which we've talked about, and glucose eventually is broken down to make this stuff ATP. Um, ATP is the energy that cells use. Aden adenosine triphosphate looks something like this. Don't worry too much about its structure, but just notice it's got these three group, these three P's. These are phosphorus atoms, um, and the bonds between these different phosphorus atoms with these oxygens. That's actually where the energy gets stored. So you see here in this different kind of representation, we've got a P with energy and a P with energy. And so what's going to happen within the cell is that these, these bonds are going to be broken and energy is released at that time. Now the simplest way that cells will get energy from glucose um, is called fermentation. And fermentation is done by many unicellular organisms and some multicellular organisms, but mainly we're talking about prokaryotes, bacterial cells. This simple process takes glucose, which I've represented here with six circles because glucose has six carbons. Each one will represent one carbon atom. Um, the first step in this process, glucose is split into two molecules of something called pyruvate, and each has only three. So you see you just split the thing in half to form these two pyruvate molecules. Um, this process here with this arrow is called glycolysis. So you don't have to write that down yet, but in a minute we're going to talk about glycolysis in more detail, and, and you'll write it down then. From there, the pyruvate is further converted into uh, uh, two molecules of ethanol, which is, yes, indeed, the alcohol that you find in alcoholic beverages, ethanol. And then some carbon dioxide is also given off. So you see here's a carbon, and here's two more carbons. So that pyruvate was broken into a two-carbon molecule and then carbon dioxide. In this process, we get two ATP molecules out of one molecule of glucose. Now this process is called alcoholic fermentation. Here's an overview. We have glucose, and we end up with two alcohols and two carbon dioxides. Or here's another way to think about it. Sugar is broken down by, in this case, yeast. Bacteria do this, yeast do this. Um, you end up with carbon dioxide, ethanol, and a bunch of energy, and remember that's two ATPs. Now, why fermentation is important? Uh, the first is that alcoholic fermentation done by yeast gives us breads, beer, and wine. So that carbon dioxide, look at the bubbles here in this bread. That carbon dioxide that's produced through the process gives, makes bread rise, which is fantastic, right? We gotta love, love a good bread. Um, and then the alcohol that's produced by some yeast gives us beer and wine. That's the process that, that produces that. Here are the yeast that do that, by the way. This is a microscope image of that. Then we have bacteria that do this process that make soy sauce, sauerkraut, cheese, and yogurt. And again, see the bubbles in the Swiss cheese that comes from um, the carbon dioxide as the bacteria are fermenting. The other form of fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation. And the result of lactic acid fermentation is not alcohol, but you end up with something called lactic acid at the end. You don't have carbon dioxide bubbles produced, but you get this other 
um, molecule produced. And this happens in your body when your muscles are exhausted. If you're exercising, like this fellow's a marathon runner, he's running for a long time, eventually oxygen gets depleted and you have to do this process of lactic acid fermentation. Um, when this happens, lactic acid builds up in the muscle and that's when you feel the burn. You've probably heard that before, you feel the burn. It, when you're feeling the burn, it's because there's acid building up in your muscles. The other wonderful thing about fermentation is that bacteria in the intestines do this and it actually helps us to digest our foods. For some foods, we need the bacteria to help us. Now, a better way of getting energy from glucose is called cellular respiration. We do this in our cells. Um, fermentation does not require oxygen, as I said before, and it's called anaerobic. That word anaerobic means no oxygen. But when cells use oxygen, it's more efficient, and it gives us a lot more ATP for every glucose molecule. But it requires oxygen. So you see here you have food plus oxygen. You get a lot of energy, and then you make carbon dioxide as well, which, of course, we breathe out. Animal and plant cells use oxygen. We call this aerobic. That means with oxygen. So here's an overview of the process. We have glucose plus oxygen, six of them. You get six carbon dioxides out. You get six water molecules and a bunch of ATP energy. Now there are three steps to cellular respiration. The first step is glycolysis, which I mentioned a minute ago. It takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. It's similar to fermentation. We have glucose. Here's six carbon glucose split into two pyruvate molecules. Um, it yields two ATP. In other words, you get two ATP out. Two are used up in the process. Four are produced. So we have glycolysis. With oxygen, it leads to cellular respiration. Without oxygen, fermentation. The second step of cellular respiration is called the Krebs cycle, or it's also called the citric acid cycle. This takes place in the mitochondria. Okay, we talked about the mitochondria provide energy. This is how they do it. Okay, it it's, takes place inside um, the empty spaces in here in the mitochondria. So it's got this folded up membrane in the in-between spaces. It's called the matrix of the mitochondria. There are many steps involved, which you don't have to learn. Notice there's a whole bunch of words in this cycle here. You don't have to know those. Uh, but along the way, the pyruvate is converted many times into different molecules. Carbon dioxide is given off. And you end up using 2 ATP, but gaining 4. Okay? So here you get 2 ATP out of the process of cell respiration. Six carbon dioxide molecules are produced. And the final step of cellular respiration is called electron transport. Um, it's a very complicated process. You're not going to have to learn the whole process. Just know it takes place on the membrane inside the mitochondria, which is called the Christi. Okay, so all this folded up membrane on the inside here, that's where this is taking place, right on the membrane on the inside. In this last step, up to 32 ATP can be produced. This is the oxygen requiring step, so oxygen goes in, and then you get out a whole load of ATP. So think about one molecule of glucose. If you are a bacteria or a yeast cell, you get two ATP every time you gobble up a glucose. But if you are a, a eukaryotic cell, like an animal cell or a plant cell, and you have one molecule of glucose, you're going to get possibly 36 ATP for every glucose molecule. Much more efficient, much more energy coming out. So here's a nice overview of the whole thing. We have glucose entering glycolysis. You get two ATP out. It's split into two pyruvate molecules and enters the Krebs cycle in which we get two more ATP out. And then finally, it enters the electron transport chain in which water and carbon dioxide are given off. Actually, carbon dioxide is given off during the Krebs cycle. Um, and then we get 32 ATP out of that electron transport. Here's another overview just to help. You take one glucose molecule, split into two pyruvate, you get two ATP. With oxygen, aerobic respiration, you end up 34 more ATP for a total of 36. Without oxygen, you enter fermentation. Um, lactic acid fermentation or lactate fermentation like in your muscles or alcoholic fermentation where you get uh, carbon dioxide out and alcohol out. This is done by yeast. It says here plants and we talked about bacteria. All right, that's it for this lesson and we will see you next time.